We are in Oklahoma at the Bassmaster Classic, and there is no one more Oklahoman than maybe maybe Barry Switzer. Maybe. Maybe. But then Mr. O.T. Fears, one of my all-time angling heroes and someone who's been a friend of mine for 30 years. At least. 30, since he was six years old. Yeah. O.T. is one of the legends of the sport. Um, you know, you see all these 40-pound bags coming in now. O.T. for a long time held the weight record. Santee Cooper, what was your weight record? 34-4 for five fish. 34-4 for five fish. Now, this was in the days before they didn't have live wells that were big enough for fish. How did you fit those? And you had a co-angler, right, or a partner? Right. So how did you fit those fish divided, in? We had divided live wells, but by the first day, my five, first five weighed 28-9. So I had them laid in there, two like this, two like this, and one on top. And it had to have the area to run in full time with catch and release in there on a multiple doses of it. And the next day, my five first five weighed 30 pounds. David Fritz had set the record on the first day with 32.8, I believe it was. So my partner, man name was man name was Jack Bell. He wanted to have me break the record. And I said, well, I'll do it tomorrow. He said, no, you got to do it today because you may not get a chance tomorrow. So I, I called my smallest one was six, six pounds, two ounces after I called three times. And what makes it kind of juicy is we come in early for the weigh-in and I asked my partner, he only had three fish, and I said, do you, you catch any around weigh-in? Check in. He said, "Yeah, on a little cove right above there." So we went up there, and there's a little creek that the channel runs runs through the, the hydrilla, and then there's little holes out in the hydrilla. Uh, I'm sitting behind the wheel, and I said, "Get up there and run a trolling motor." He said, "No, you go ahead and run it." So I took a top water and threw out there in one of those holes and worked it a couple of times, and the set of lips come up and grab the top water and went down in the hydrilla. So I'm finding, well, in the meantime, there's two boat, tournament boats that are fishing the edge of this creek channel, and they had come up there close to me, and I finally got it wrestled out, and uh, the got that up there, pulled it up, picked the hydrill off of it, looked at it, and I held it up, and I said, I don't think, Jack, I don't think it's going to help me. He said, surely it will. And I said, I don't think so. My smallest one was six pounds, two ounces on the scale. Well, the scales at that time said... Plus or minus two ounces. So you didn't know for sure one way or the other whether it was minus or plus. And uh, so I put it on the scale and it weighed five pounds, eight ounces. I held it up like this, and these two tournament boats were sitting right there over close watching the whole deal. I said, Looks like it won't help me. And I threw it back in. And they said, My gosh, old people, what do you know? <laughs> so, well, my scale says 34.4. And it turns out that that's exactly what it was. So many things I want to ask you about. I mean, I think. Red Man All-American you won, but when I think of you, there's one word, superstar, maybe two words, but the Superstars Tournament, that was one of the highlights of your career too, and you know, you think about guys like Dean Rojas with the frog, or Brett Height with the jackhammer, but I think of you with one particular bait from that Superstars Tournament. The red-bladed spinnerbait. Red-bladed spinnerbait, and that's an Oklahoma thing, we're standing here in Tulsa, why is that such a big deal in Oklahoma? Well, the bait was con uh, constructed to have maximum, the blade, for maximum vibration. The color, the colors on this bait were from the color selector. Remember the color uh, the selector? Lauren Hill, Dr. another Hill. Oklahoma person. Dr. Hill. And uh, the uh, colors on the color selector, the most visible in dirty water, because we fish a lot of dirty water. And I mean, some of it, you can throw the spinnerbait out there and it lay on top for it, kind of sunk down in the mud. And uh, I developed that with max vibration. The wire is piano wire. It's not shiny stainless wire, 302 stainless, which everybody uses on their spinner base. So it doesn't break. It takes a tensile strength of about 10 times what the, the stainless is. So it, it, it stands up. The, the, the line tie is a horseshoe. So it doesn't, it pulls the bait level in the water. So that it, when it comes, hits an object, it hops over it instead of lays over on its side and, hook, and you're hung up automatically. Now, other than going to eBay, is there a way to get those spinner baits now? Go to my uh, Facebook. Facebook, OT Fears the uh, third. The third, and the message me. Message OT. Also makes redfish baits. He's one of the best redfish fishermen I know around. Well, I designed the redfish bait. First of all, redfish like spinner bait. 
But a spinnerbait doesn't hold up to a redfish. They're, they're like a bull in a china closet. And so I developed the same, the same wire, the same bend, and you can put your different jig heads on it, different color trailers, and, and uh, so it's hinged in such a way that the redfish can't get a direct pull on it or bend it. So it, it, it stands up. I've seen them in some of the tackle shops down there in New Orleans. If people want to get those, what's the best way to get your redfish page? Message me. Message OT Fears via Facebook. Now, it's called Booger Red. Booger Red. More important than fishing? My man OT is the one who introduced me to eating crawfish at a tournament at Toledo Bend in 2001. Do you still eat crawfish? Yes, I do. How, many pounds, I how many pounds can you eat? A uh, couple, anyway. He's slowing down. Yeah. <laughs> slowing down. OT fears. One final question people always ask. What does OT stand for? Just OT. Just OT. He's just OT. 30 years after I first met him, one of my heroes of the fishing industry. So thrilled to run into him in Tulsa, Oklahoma.